So welcome back everyone. My name is Akshay and welcome back to this GFG Beauty this week of day 139. So I hope everyone of you have enjoyed the Holi festival and let us continue with our today's streak. So let us see what the today's question is about. The name of the question is find anagrams in linked list and uh, I have been uh, many of you have contacted me like not many <laughs> one or two of you have contacted me on Instagram as well to so uh, uh, in a request that please make the videos in English. So I'll use both the language, right? So when and where, if it is required for me to speak in Hindi, I'll speak Hindi there. And then when and, when and where it will be required to speak English, then I will use that language as well. Let us see. So this question is about find anagrams in a linked list. If you see the tags, it is a linked list and sliding window. So let us see. So let's read the question first. So given a linked list of characters and string S, Return all anagrams of the string present in the given linked list. So in case of overlapping anagrams, choose the first anagram from left. So let, let me first tell you, or if you have known already, what the anagram means, right? Let's say you have a string given as ABC, right? So you can make any strings in any order which has these number of characters, the same characters, right? So I can make BAC, I can make ACB, similarly I can make BCA, right? The length should be same as well as the each character should be same. The frequency of each character should be same irrespective of order. So we can say now these are the anagrams of ABC, right? So I hope you are clear on this point. Let us resume the video. So the given input is given as ABC, ADBCA as a linked list and the string given is ABC and the output is as follows with the explanation that there are three anagrams. You can see ABC and the BCA here as well as BCA at the last three characters, right? But they have considered in the overlapping case, they have considered the characters starting from the left, that is the anagrams which we encountered the first. So we have encountered ABC first. So that is why I will, in these two overlapping anagrams, I will take ABC and then BCA and that's what they have returned in the list, right? So how can we do this here? So one approach coming to my mind is like this string is given BAC, right? So you may have also observed that let us traverse this length times this is n, right? Because to a string to have the two strings to be an anagram, their length should be same, right? If their lengths are same, same, then you have to compare the frequency of each character is same, right? In in both the strings, then we can say that the both that two of the strings are anagram. So let us let us make a window of size n. So if we make a window of size n, we can see that ABC is an anagram, right? Then we, then then my pointer will be updated to this second, uh, this one, uh, second character, and you will see that this is also an anagram. Then then my pointer will come at C and it will check C A D. I will say it's no. Then my pointer will be at A and it will check A D B and no. Then D B C it is again no and B C A it is yes, right? So if the question would have been just to find the number of anagrams. Even if they are overlapping or not overlapping, the code would be have been very simple, right? We just have to make a for loop for let's say i equals to 0 to i less than n minus uh, the total length minus the string length, right? And we could have easily compared using these two cr criteria, right? But here what we have to do is that if there are overlapping anagrams, you do not have to consider the second one, right? So one smart trick that I can think of is that when you get this ABC, when we have already formed this ABC that, okay, this is my anagram, right? Do not check again for this set of window, this window, this particular window, don't check again, right? ABC, agar is window, I'm saying that this is an anagram. Then if you check from the second character, then there will be a possibility that you may get the second window as anagram as well. And then you will again have the problem of overlapping sub, uh, anagrams. So why to check it? If you are getting the first window itself as an anagram, just update this pointer. So let's say my two pointers were here, P1 and P2, right? So let's update the pointer to the next window. So I am saying that P1 and P2 will be here now, right? This will be my second window. I will just start checking from the second window and then P2 will eventually go to here, right? We need to do nothing but the starting and ending days of the window. But let's say that the first window itself was not an anagram, right? As you can see, the first window here was anagram, right? So we shifted to the second window. We do not update the pointer one by one, right? But here, when you shifted to the second window ADB, you can clearly see that this is not an anagram, right? 
So in the case where the particular window is not an anagram, they, then you have to move pointer wise, right? You have to check DVC. Then this DVC is also not an anagram. Then again, you have to move pointer wise, right? And then you can finally set DCA is your anagram. So suppose there was, they would have some characters again like LMB, right? So now after checking this BCA, your pointer would have jumped from to this point, from to this point. That is after this window and then you keep on comparing like that. I hope you are very clear. We are very clear at this point of stage. I have shown you that what is the logic we can follow, right? Now we will try to code this entire thing. Okay. Okay. So as you can see that I have maintained this P1 and P2, then definitely we'll be needing this uh, pointers, right? To iterate in our window. So how we can do that? How we can do that? So before, so the let me write it let me write it for you if window encountered don't mind my handwriting right <laughs> this is encountered as anagram right then what you need to do is jump ahead of that window that window i'm showing this with symbol okay now if that window this is f, f case this is else case now if that window is not an anagram then you have to move pointer wise, move one point ahead and then keep on comparing, right? I hope we are clear till this point, right? This is the entire, this is, let's say the overall architecture of our code, which architecture of our logic on which our code depends, right? And how we check if it's anagram or not, right? So we have to make a frequency array, right? Let's name it at array and we will store the frequency of this given, given string length. And the string is BAC, right? So it will have the frequency of B as one, C as one, and one and A as one. How we can do that? We can, we can, we, we will make a, an array of zero to let's say till length 26. I have explained this thing also multiple times on my periodic videos. So if there's a character A coming, then what I will do, I will subtract it with A and this will give me a zero, right? And I will say that plus one. So this zero will be nothing at representing A, 26 similar will represent Z. So there is a character, let's say C, then I'll again subtract minus A and it will give me the ASCII values will be compared, right? And it will give me what? 2. And this 0, 1 and 2. This represents B and C. This will be updated as plus 1, right? So I hope you be clear at this point. So first step is what? This is our main logic. And the first step is that we have to make the frequency array for this string length, right? So let us code that thing. Let us code that thing. And then we will proceed ahead with the rest of the solution. Okay. So I have opened the code editor and I highly recommend you guys. So uh, this is the point where you must try to code this thing, which I've just shown you. You have just made, you have to just make a frequency array name as ARR and try to store the frequency, right? And then we'll continue. Okay. So I have mentioned that part of code here. We are making the int n as s dot length, making an array of 26 signs, iterating in that string s and marking all the characters with the difference of the character a and then at that index, I'm incrementing the count, right? So I hope you are clear at this point. Let us move ahead. So what was our thing that we need to traverse in the window, right? So let me write the characters again here. So it was A, B, C. It was A, B, C, A, D, B, C, A, right? So we need to move, we need to move, right? So this is a link list. So let's make a pointer P1, which is pointing at head like a pointer p2 which is pointing at head right and uh, what we can do is that we will uh, clearly we can run a for loop so for, for i equals to zero so i less than n because we just need to iterate for one window size and then the pointers which is iterating that should not be null at any point because at that point then we have to stop our iteration right so this would be the pseudo, pseudo code for the for loop we need to store this frequency right so so before this for loop we have to make a frequency array for our current window of size 26 again right and we will update the pointer so i will say that frequency of let's say p2 dot data right minus a plus plus right now what i have to do that p2 is p2 is equals to p2 dot next right so what will happen what will happen is that p2 will update it to this point then to this point and then to this point right but you can see that my first window is just ABC, right? And when P2 is updated to, if uh, it has iterated for three times at the length of the string was three, my P2 is here, right? But I needed, I needed to check if my, this frequency array is 
is an, an anagram, right? I need to include it in my answer as well as if I have the pointer P2 here, right? Then only, then only I can say that uh, point this P2 to null, right? Right? And you can just add this A into your, let's say, answer, answer of node, right? And if you just add A into your answer, it will automatically have this BC. And since you have pointed the last element as null, so it will automatically have these structure there a b c null so we just have to we just have to add the first pointer that is p1 right so that means since your p2 has been updated to this a agar hamare paas if you if we were having a previous ptr right whenever you we were moving if you have the track of the previous state then i would have easily take back my p2 to the previous pointer right so for that purpose, so for that purpose, let's maintain a one more pointer that is previous, right? Previous. Okay. So whenever we are updating the frequency at the same time, I will say that the previous is P2, right? And now you can clearly say that when the P2 will be at this pointer, previous will be at this pointer, right? It will happen. It will happen. So let me give you a this thing so initially p1 and p2 were at the same point then p2 become here come here and previous became here come here comes here right then p2 then p2 comes here and previous comes at b and then finally p2 comes here and then previous comes here right so now i can say that p2 is nothing but previous so that i can make that my p2 pointer back to my the ending point of my window that was the main logic that was the main need of right so after this for, for loop i can say that p2 is previous right okay right so okay so let us uh, do this code into our editor right and then we will proceed again okay so let me write some more logic statements here p2 is previous here right now for the iteration for the other windows this logic will hold that if your first window you iterated for if it's an anagram then you have to jump ahead of that particular window right else you have to move just one pointer ahead why i already explained you that right tk so from that from here point of time let's make an let's make an array list of point node right let's name it as answer right and now i have to work until my p2 until my this pointer of my last element of the window does not becomes null right right and the use case as I've shown you that if 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 this is an anagram which is then I have to make the last point last node of the of this window to null so that if I just add the first first node of my uh, anagrams uh, list right then the B C N null automatically get added right how we can do that let's make some more pointers here what I can do is that I can make a T one temp right so temp will be pointing at this stage here at previous let me use a different color even right or let's 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 code this thing first and then we will proceed on to the second section right so let's do this thing and then we'll proceed on okay so i have mentioned that code as well we made some pointers p1 and p2 that is marking the uh, p1 is the starting point of your window and the u2 is the ending point of your window and node previous is nothing but it is helping you to get the p2 which is going out of the window of the that which is going out of the window right a window ka jo last element hai, usse just wo aage chala ja hai because we are using this for loop n times right so usse piche lane ke liye for that to, to handle it so that p2 get back to the last element of of the current window humne ye cheez handle kiya right we handle this thing we made an answer array list and now we will start including our answer and but before that we need to we need to point this last uh, window element, the last element of the window to null, right? But before that also, we need to check that if it is an answer or not, right? So I need, so I will run a for loop and there will be two if involvements there, right? So if our answer is there, so let's say I'll make a function is equal, right? I, I'll compare with this thing with my, the previous array, which has the, which has the frequency of our original given string of our question. And I'll compare with my array, with my frequency array for which has the frequency of all the characters for my current window, right? So if it says that yes, it is equal, then I can say 
that yes, this window is my anagram, right? And if it's an anagram, I have to jump ahead of this window. I have to jump ahead of this window to check for the next window possibility of anagram. Why? Because question says that if they are overlapping, take the first one. So if I have found the first one, why to check from the next pointer? <coughs> Sorry. Why to check from the next pointer? Just move ahead of that window, right? Hmm. So for that case, <coughs> for that case, I will make a pointer T1 here, right? And Okay, and then what I will say, what I will say that T1 is nothing but P2 because P2 has already been returned to my this point, right? I will say T1 is nothing but P2. Why I am doing this step is that I am storing the last element of the previous, last element of the previous window and pointing it to null. Okay, now I will update my P2 to the just the next of my window, right? So T1 will be here at here at this point and P2 will be updated at this point right at this point and then I will say that T1 dot next is equals to null and then finally I will add this window in my answer right and to add this thing I will just add the first node because it has already linked with B and C right so let us code that part right and then we will come back again so that's that so that that is this is now a very critical part so let me show you the uh, live coding here so i will say that my pointer is p2 right the last pointer of the window which we are iterating so until it goes to null right what i will say that there will be if now i will comparing the that if both arrays are same or not so i will make a function let's say equal right which has this array and this my frequency array which has the frequency of my current window if that's the case then I will jump ahead the uh, uh, jump ahead uh, the window or else I will move just one pointer ahead else jump one PTR ahead right that was our logic so if that's the case, then I need to include this in my answer. So let us include it in the answer. So answer dot add p1, right? And now, okay, before adding, uh, yeah, you have to add it as well as you have to point the last element of your window to null. So let's do that. So I will say node t1 is equals to p2, right? And then I will I will point the p2 to the next next pointer so that we can process the next window p2 dot next right and i will point the t1 as next equals to null this will mark the end of our window and will include in our answer right that's the case let me include some comments as well so you could argue here to me uh, to uh, me with now that why did you t1 dot next equals to null after this uh, in the second step why did you do this the itself at the first so, if I do that, if t1.next is equal to null, I will write here at this point, then this p2 would have lost the reference, right? So, we have to move our p2 We would have, we have to move this, the, uh, the pointer at the last element of first window to the next pointer so that we can compare the next window, right? So, that is why this is written after this p2 equals to p2.next. I hope you are clear at this point as well, right? Now what I have to do that for the next window, you will do the exact steps that you done here. Exact steps, right? So that means you have to make one more previous, right? For this thing. So let us make that. I will say, uh, what? Node previous one is equals to null as of now. And why I'm using this? The reason is same. Right, the reason is same that I have done. Same use uh, uh, we use the previous for the first window, right? So that we have we made our p2 to point at the last element of our current window. So let us do this. So the first step will be that we have to fill our existing frequency array with zero, or you can say you have to reset it. After resetting it, you have to move on with the filling with the exacts these steps. So let me copy this step from here and paste it here. Right. Okay. 
few changes will be made and that changes will be that uh, uh, this previous one will be converted to previous will be converted to previous one and at last this step will also be copied to here okay to here and then again previous two will point to previous one i hope you are getting the logic i will show you the dry run as well right also our current p1 our current p1 is pointing to the first element of our first window right so it should point here 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 as well so this p1 should also be shifted or let me use different color this p1 should also be shifted to this my new window that is here right and and here what's the pointer the pointer here is p2 so i will just mention that thing that before processing it i will say that p1 is equals to p2 now right and at this point of at this point of uh, time we are processing the next window so i hope we are clear at this point right now there comes the else case right we'll just uh, move one pointer ahead and that is very easy that is very easy so how we can say that so let's say a b c a d right so i have p1 here i have p2 here right and i i have stored this frequency now what i need to do is i need to uh, okay p1 and p2 itself are at the same point at the same point and what i need to do is that i already have i already have the previous window in my frequency array right i just have to neglect the first element and add the add the uh, the next next element right that is this first element of the last element of my second window right you can say that this will be my new window and i will say that the the next forthcoming element will be the last element of my new window so exclude the first one and add just the uh, above just the uh, front one let's say jo aage hai yaar theek hai so wahi karenge hum log yahan pe so i will say that frequency frequency of p1 dot data minus a is nothing but minus minus remove that from your window that has now been eliminated from your window move the pointers p1 is equals to p1 dot next and similarly p2 is equals to p2 dot next right and then frequency add the new element in the in your current window that is p2 dot data minus a plus plus right right so let us do a dry run of this code now the overall dry run of this code and then we, i think we will be on a very good note to start it okay so let me open a new okay let's resume so initially p1 and p2 were at this point and previous was here pointing at null right what happens that after the processing of first window what happened is that p2 comes here and p1 comes here right and for that window i have maintained another pointer that is previous one that is pointing to null right what happened now is that this was the this was the a part of anagram right so in the while loop in the while loop what happens uh, in the code that we made this as point t1 and then pointed it to null null right and in an answer in an answer in the answer node i just added the a and b c and null was automatically added because i pointed the last element to null i did that part right now again we run ran the same code now p2 will be updated to this point and previous to this point right it will updated again to this point and previous one to this point right since the length of the string is 3 so i have to move the pointers just one time again previous one and at this point of time the frequency array will have a1 d1 and b1 right and at last p2 was again updated to previous one so yahan se the pointer would be now updated again to p2 here so we are talking about this window from p1 to p2 but you can but you can clearly see that this is a frequency array at this point of time and the array which we uh, in the array which has the string bac right which has b frequency as 1 a as 1 and c as 
and you can see that this frequency and this array does not matches right so it will go to the else part as we discussed it will just move one pointer ahead using this code right hmm. so now the pointer will come here now the pointer will come here right so p1 p1 will be updated to this point right and p2 will be updated to this point right we are talking about the window dbc and if you see then the frequency array will point as d equals to 1 b equals to 1 and c equals to 1 and how is that getting handled that before moving the pointer p1 to p1 dot next we decrease that frequency of the p1 data you can see here right right and we and after moving the p2 from this pointer to this pointer then we increase the data of p2 data frequency of p2 data so i hope we are on the same page and still it does not matches the array because array has bac right it does not matches and then again the updation will be there p1 will move to here and p2 will move to here right and now you have the frequency array as bca right it is again triggering the else part this also triggered the else part right bca and you can see that it matches with your array which has this string as bac right as the frequency 1 1 and 1 this also will have the frequency 1 1 and 1 so now it matches right but there was we have to stop at this pointer right so that where the for loop was playing the role initially we, we write that p2 dot next until it's not equals to null then you need to process so when i'm talking about my last window i'm not I have been there, I am already at this point but I am not comparing because my while loop is uh, restricting me to compare that point, right. So after the while loop, I have to I have to check it again that if is equal, if is equal, array comma frequency if that's the case, then add p1 again, I will say answer dot add p1 and this time what will be added in our list? this point will be added this last this b and since b has been added then the list will all also will be added b c a n l right so according to this question you just have to add the nodes right and rest of the linkage you have to make the link as well as null and rest it will be traversed using the inbuilt code right <clears throat> you can see here in their inbuilt code for the array list node which we are returning, what it is doing is for each and every node, they are calling a function print list. And print list will be nothing in return, it will be doing that whenever uh, uh, till the node is getting to null, it is iterating to the next pointer and printing it, right? So that is how it is getting handled. We just need to pass the, uh, the front node, the head node of our answer list of our anagram list, let's say, and rest of the things will be getting handled. So let us implement this last if statement in our code and then we'll be good to go i have included that last if also i i explained you that why we needed to do let us build that is equal function that if both the arrays are equal or not that is a very simple thing i recommend you guys also to pause this video and do it yourself okay so i've included that is equal state as well and this code is very self-explanatory so i don't think i need to explain this is equal function right i have explained you all the things with the comments there why we have written each and every line why i have made the previous pointer, the previous one pointer, right? Let me give you a code walkthrough. So we have, uh, we need to maintain uh, the overall logic was that when we iterate for first window and we saw that if it's an anagram, then since the constraint was there, if there has two overlapping intervals, you take the first one. So that is why if we have encountered the first window as our anagrams, we are not checking for the for the pointers in that particular window. Hum directly jump kar ja rahe for the next window. In this case, ABC was our anagram, so we directly checked for the uh, characters uh, after this window that is ADB. And you can see that ADB was not our anagram, then we checked it pointer wise. We checked from D pointer that is DBC, then we checked for the window BAC, right? This was the entire logic, and that is, that is what happening in our code. Code is a bit lengthy, long, but if you uh, see this, if you have, if you uh, Look at this, you will have you will have a clear understanding, right? So there is a for loop that we are doing this for first window and P2 and P2 equals to previous what I have done, I have explained you. We made an answer list of node type and then we maintained a while loop for rest of the 
uh, nodes right so there goes the two case that if our current window is an anagram <coughs> then directly jump to the next window and in the else case jump one pointer ahead and this these three lines are very self explanatory you can visualize that we are we are actually using jumping one pointer ahead so just a sliding window technique right and this code this if code i've already explained to you in very detail right okay so that's the case so what is the time complexity of this approach we are using a sliding window technique that is we are visiting each and every element just once right we are not visiting it more than once right so it will be o of n right so there is a for loop for the first window there is a while loop for rest of the elements you can clearly see that we are already we are exactly visiting the elements once that will be o of n the space complexity is that we are using a bunch of pointers and we are using a frequency array that is also O of 26 that is a constant so I will say that the constant space complexity. Let us compile and run this code and we will see that our code and the logic are on the same page definitely so we are on the same page I have given you the code walkthrough as well. So let us hit the submit button and since n constraint is less than 10 power 8 so it should definitely get submitted it is 10 power 5 which is less than 10 power 8 so the code should definitely get submitted and as you can see it is right so for the last in initiative that we took from our previous CPU to this weeks that uh, the language should not be a barrier for any learner right so and I see that many of you have been coding in C++ so <laughs> it's the, just the preference so this is the Java code in the right hand side you can see there I have explained you each and every line well in this video and that's in the left hand side it's a C++ code right that's the syntactical difference are there we have the star pointers right rest all the logic is same along with the comments right uh, let me do like this so they so that you can read the comments as well yeah so this is the C++ code I am just scrolling you scrolling it down for you guys right so that is it let's meet in the tomorrow's streak of day 140 and it's been going well and I hope you guys are practicing well you guys are solving and in the previous video I can see that there are many comments so I am actually uh, feels good that you guys are uh, engaging into solving the question consistently right so till then keep learning keep going bye bye and take care